The finger Yuta actually consumed is not Sukuna's, but Yuji Itadori. I can see it, I feel it. He's cooking. Now I know what you're thinking. How did this happen? Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Kaizen. A flashback of Gojo and Yuta's body switch training. Bruh, my man Yuta over here, he was truly the MVP as he made backup plans A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, all the way to Z to ensure that Sukuna dies. Wallahi, you're finished. Wallahi, you're finished. Essentially, during the time skip, Yuta was confident to take out Kenjaku and use his brain hopping technique before it even happened, showcasing how meticulous he was with his plans. However, Yuta knows that if Gojo does die, then using his body won't be enough. He admitted in chapter 262 that he knew switching bodies once would not have been enough for him to use Limitless properly. Hence, he has taken on the role of coming up with more viable solutions. One of which is to gain Sukuna's curse technique by consuming the remaining finger Gojo had hidden, which was to indefinitely delay the execution of Yuji Itadori. But Gojo breaks down why this is redundant due to how Yuta's copy technique works. The requirement needs Rika to eat a body part of a specific person to copy their curse technique. Remember, Unamaki lost his arms in Shibuya, whilst Hana Kurasu lost hers when Sukuna took a, you know, a little nibble at her, literally. Now all Yuta has to really do is find their body parts, feed them to Rika, and obtain their curse techniques. Even in Uru's case, Rika had taken a bite out of her arm, whereas with Kenjaku, Rika must have straight up consumed his brain during chapter 249. It's also important to note that once Rika consumed that body part, Yuta immediately gains their technique, but if they heal it through reverse curse technique, he loses the ability as well. However, the body part needed scales based off the power level of the technique that Yuta is trying to copy in the first place. So let's say you want to copy Ghetto's curse spirit manipulation, dubbed one of the greatest techniques in sorcery history, then a major important body part is required. For weaker sorcerers like Ma my Zenin, where it was construction, then the body part needed for something like that is not too significant. In this case, Charles' future sight required a rib cage, and Hakari makes this half ass promise that <laughs> he could heal him later, which, bro, that ain't happening. I'm sorry. Thank you for your service, Charles. Cheating karta hai tu. Likewise, to analyze and use Sukuna's shrine, a single finger that only equals 1 20th of him would not be enough, as Gojo claims, because Yuta needs information on how to use the technique. Most of the time, it's guesswork and through prior observation like with Uru. As a result, Gojo Sensei states, eating Sukuna's finger is a big gamble, referring back to Hakari's fever as they will lose the only connection they have to Sukuna's soul. This statement directly connects to a huge story in Jujutsu Kaisen's manga. And the final chapter. Remember, Hakari believes that everyone in life gambles on something. This is their fever of trying to change things in some way. But the true manner of dealing with this fever is by gambling. He thinks that society tramples on people who can't bet big enough, meaning people who can't take chances to progress to their goal. For example, as a sorcerer, Hakairi literally gambles his life with his domain expansion to achieve greater power. Once again, this is something that we even find in Gojo. He wagered everything on his students, even his status in Jujutsu society to foster them into strong sorcerers like he did with Yuta and Yuji saving their lives. Therefore, the fever as Gojo puts it in chapter 267, it applies to sorcerers in general. They bet on their lives to take down cursed spirits in the hopes of creating a better society by eradicating evil. On the other hand, as the manga said itself, society also hates people who don't know when to stop. Knowing one's limits is crucial to not losing it all. In this case, Gojo understands the gamble of using Sukuna's finger the way Yuta wants to. It's not 
worth risking. Which is why the finger Yuta actually consumed is not Sukuna's, but Yuji Itadori. I can see it, I feel it. It's cooking. But how did this work? Yuji has Sukuna's curse technique engraved into his body, which was confirmed by Gojo's six eyes. And he ended up being a curse object soaked in the king's energy. This means eating his finger poses no risk, as they won't be losing anything. And to compensate for the lack of body part, Yuta stated he will make a binding vow that limits the use of malevolent shrine hence why he didn't spam it against Sukuna and why it wasn't so strong as he fills Yuji in on the plants they make a hunch that resonance with Sukuna does not relay memories or thought but rather just a change in anatomy the reason Yuta assumed this is because Yuji himself can't read Sukuna's thoughts and their relationship should be a two-way street However, just to ensure he isn't jeopardizing this big brain strategy, Yuta decides to only relay necessary information and suggests Yuji doesn't give him his finger until Gojo is confirmed to be dead. But you know, let's call it as it is. This whole resonance concept that Kodo picked up from nowhere, if it was only physical anatomy information that would be shared, why didn't they just tell Yuji that entire plan since thoughts can't cross over? Sukuna couldn't even feel there was a missing finger on Yuji the entire time. Huh. That's just lazy writing. We need a better explanation. Anyway, the reason why Yuji was given the curse object gauntlets was not only to hide his missing finger, but also increase his durability. In the end, Sukuna noticing Yuji missing fingers sends him into a shock, acknowledging the wound isn't new, and that he only used the boy's pinky finger to switch bodies in Megami in chapter 212. He thinks back to Yuta's statement and realizes, Bruh! I'm cooked, I've been duped fam. We have been hoodwinked, bamboozled, and flat out deceived. In chapter 251, he was tricked into believing that Rika ate the last remaining finger, which subsequently gave Yuta access to Sukuna's shrine. However, as mentioned and showcased with Jacob's Ladder, Yuta's copy technique's true strength is having two of the same cards in their hands. This causes a complementary effect of misdirection.